Hi, welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. I'm a former media and marketing executive turned career strategist and executive coach. I spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups, and today I show others how to do the same. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies and actionable steps to leverage your strengths, increase your confidence, and develop your career well-being. Ready? Let's do it. Hey, friends. Welcome back. This week, I am introducing you to another extraordinary individual, my friend and former colleague, Margie Hocking. Margie brings over 25 years experience working in media and technology, and she's worked on a ton of Fortune 100 companies, Microsoft, Walmart, Honda, AT&T, GM, P&G, T-Mobile. She today works with clients to bring comprehensive solutions that really create significant impact to business. She's currently the head of enterprise accounts at Cataboon, which is a SaaS-based solution for engagement and gamification. They basically build responsive games in minutes, which is pretty cool. She's managing the blue chip clients. She's building relationships. She's building trust. She's, she's delivering organic growth. And it's also really telling, as we have our conversation today, how Margie has consistently been building a network, creating relationships how she has transferred her skills, right? Starting in production and moving into enterprise sales and accounts at a SaaS-based platform. I mean, there's this major understanding of how to take your excellence and transfer it elsewhere. She also, we talk about how she is one of the original remote workers. Again, she's one of my former colleagues and she was working remotely from Dallas when our home base was New York. And then we also talk about mentorship, what she originally looked for when she found a mentor. And eventually we round out with talking about how she manages and has consistently managed stress in her career. This conversation is really helpful, especially if you're thinking of transitioning from one industry and from to another. Margie has done it and has done it in excellent. So dig in, enjoy this episode. I will put all of her information in the show notes. And as always, my friends, here is to possibility. Hey, Margie, I am so glad you are here today. Awesome, Jill. I'm so excited to talk to you. All right. What I ask everyone we first start is, let's go way back to the beginning and Uh-oh. tell our listeners, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, it's I really wanted to be an actress. Um, my mother was a, a pretty well-known local actress in Dallas, and I just loved, I was in a play with her when I was 12 years old, um, and I just loved everything about what she was doing. But I think once I got, and I did theater in high school and loved it, but once I got to college, I think I realized I really wasn't cut out for the actress life. But I love the whole idea of theater and film and the behind the scenes of it all. Um, it really, really, I thought it was thrilling and everything was just kind of a rush. And so when I moved to New York, I, I grown up in Dallas, I went to Tulane and met a lot of New Yorkers at Tulane. And so decided to move up there. I started working in production I worked for a small production company in New York so that I could be around the whole vibe of theater and film and TV. Um, and so that's kind of where the connect like where it all starts yeah yeah and I think that's really interesting obviously knowing you for many years and as our listeners will learn today like your tremendous career working in production and and what has happened from there so take us through some of the highlights of what you did from there and then obviously I want to go deeper into what you're doing today sure so um I would say kind of one of my highlights in my career was working at Saturday Night Live um I was the assistant to the film producers to think about those parody commercials, those, you know, those really funny, um, jokey commercials they do. So awesome. Yeah. They're so awesome. Like, um, I'm trying to think of some of the ones, Oh, the one, one of my favorites was the love toilet where you, it was a two toilets that were combined so that you could sit with your loved one and hold hands. (laughs) while I mean, they're just so out of, uh, so um, so love that. That was just an amazing experience for a girl from Texas because 
just to be around all that talent and all these like famous people, it just like blew my mind. But on the other hand, I had a very, very difficult boss. And I, so I had to learn how to advocate for myself and stand up for myself because I just hadn't experienced that type of behavior before in yeah. from in Texas. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so it was, like, it was a really fast learning experience of kind of what you can tolerate and what you need to, to, to kind of mitigate. Okay. So based on that, how do you think you got through it? Like, did you find a mentor? Did you read personal development books? Like, how'd you get through it? Did you tap into Um, your family and they help? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. I mean, I kind of just, I I got through it because what ended up happening is there was a whole support staff of people in the industry that had gotten out from under this person that would, like, when I left there, I got all these interviews because people were like, oh, you work for him? All right. You got it. You got, you've got the stuff, right? And resilience and grit. got through it. Like, and, and so it was kind of amazing there. And of course, they were all female, um, female assistants. And so there was just this network of people that started helping me, um, when I left and helped me find the next job. So it was, that part was the positive of it is that there was just a great network of people kind of coming out of that experience. That's Um, amazing. And then you all continue to stay in the New York media scene where I know you have experience at HBO, MTV, NBC Universal. I mean, you have tremendous, tremendous production experience. So how how did you continue to think about navigating the next opportunity to continue to move your career trajectory forward? You know, it's funny, as I was thinking about it last night, just kind of thinking about my career, um, a lot of it was just building connections with people. Like it was less about the career I wanted, it was more about who are the people I want to work with, mm. um, who are, you know, what I love that people connection and that relationship with people. So I was thinking about it. I've had very few interviews in my whole career. It's kind of amazing because either I've made a connection with somebody and they brought me to the next job or I got recommended. And so it was just kind of a very simple process to to get onboarded into these companies. So I I built a reputation in New York of, um, as a line producer, as a production person of being very, very strong at that, but also very good working with clients and navigating clients and building those relationships so that they want to continue working with you. Mm. So, um, that, that I think, so it just kind of all evolved. I can't say that like I had this master plan and, I want to go here and I want to go there. It just was always kind of felt right. Oh, these are the right people I want to work with. These are, you know, this feels like a cool job. So, you know, worked at MTV for about four or five years, which was an amazing experience. And then that kind of parlayed into working with HBO. And then that parlayed into being executive producer at a small production company. And then that went to, then I went to our client USA Network and I worked um, at running their production team for a while on uh, promotions. And then, you know, our mutual friend, Chris Dorn had moved over from, he had been at a network and he moved over to, had been a former client. He moved over to our agency, old agency and said, you know, you need, we need somebody like you here because we're trying to do content creation and nobody has a production background and nobody knows kind of how to do this and you're the perfect person and let's come in. I had no idea what a media agency was. I literally <laughs> was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've seen <laughs> rooms where they talk about GRPs, blah, blah, blah. Like, I have no idea. Right, what right. So wait, just to keep our audience in the loop yes. here. So um, Margie and I met when we were working for one of the world's largest global media agencies, very successful agency. So a couple of things she said, when she just said GRP, GRP is the way that media is measured, which helps advertisers uh, figure out and networks, media networks, figure out how much they're going to charge, right? So it's a media math term. So we're, we're a little geeking out, a little inside baseball there. Um, the other thing that Margie said that I want to go back to, because if you're a listener for a while, you know, I have said this time and time again, what did she say? The power of connection, the power of networking. 
I've had the pleasure of working alongside Margie. I mean, I want to say it was probably like eight years or so we worked together. Yeah. I could be yeah. wrong around, but give or take. And watching the way everybody knew Margie, it didn't matter. And the, they didn't necessarily know her from the current position. It was because they met at one point and another thing and another role and another production. So the importance of making sure that you are maintaining and nurturing your network, it's going to look different for everyone. But for you, what does that look like? Because that is what's going to keep you connected. We've also discussed before that, you know, in a situation like we've had over the last three years in this COVID situation, where many of us are working from home, it was because of our mass network that one, kept us sane, kept us connected, and also helped us find jobs. We know I got jobs through networking experiences um, during COVID too. So I just want to pause on that and make sure that we drive that home because, Having a network and building a network and staying in contact with those people is really a major, major part of your career success. So thank you, Margie, for bringing that, um, you know, up into the forefront. So you're now in a media agency. Then what happens? Um, so what's interesting and I think relevant probably for your audience is that um, about four years in at the media agency, my husband got a great opportunity to move to Dallas with a job. And um, at that point, nobody was remote working. We didn't have an office in Dallas. And I just remember going into our um, boss's office and like, I was shaking thinking, mm -hmm. I really don't want to lose this job what is he going to say? I'm going to pitch him that I'm going to move to Dallas and I'm going to work on the Walmart account, which wasn't my account at the time. And I will be there. I'll be in Bentonville every week. And, um, and he's like, okay, so my option is either I lose you or I make this work for you. Well, this is a really easy choice. And that was so rare. And so the choice was he let me stay. Yeah. Um, that was yeah. So but rare. also a credit to, again, your, your, the brand of Margie, the reputation and the talent and the expertise that you built. Again, if you were not a high performing individual, they might not upset that. So again, a credit to what you have built. Amazing. Oh, thank you. I think what was amazing, like he was a forward thinker because I think there are a lot of people would have not, I mean, that was just not done back then. I don't no. think there was anybody at the agency that was working remotely that I knew about. So it was pretty cool. And, and so I worked, I, I probably worked twice as hard because I felt like I was, so, it was such an opportunity to be able to do that. Um, and I was very disciplined about it. I, I think that's the thing. <laughs> so I'm laughing because I don't meet Margie face to face. Someone's like, oh, you need to like connect with Margie. She's in Dallas. I'm like, okay, great. Can I get her phone number? And they're like, yeah, 212, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how does she have a 212 phone number? <laughs> <laughs> so I Margie, lived for a long time. But you did. <laughs> I lived in New York for a long time. I still have that 212 number. I know you do. It's crazy <laughs> that you got that transferred. Amazing. And it was great. I mean, I feel like that was just an amazing learning experience, um, you know, <laughs> beyond the G uh, GRPs, I learned just so much about, uh, you know, we worked on some of the best brands well, in the well, world yeah. and, um, and just learning about those brands and how to, how to deliver marketing solutions for these clients that actually drove their business. Like that mm -hmm. was just a really new kind of puzzle for me mm -hmm. to help solve for, um, and so that was super interesting. And, and like I said, I just really enjoyed working with those clients and sol helping solve their problems and building those relationships. Um, still talk to a lot of those clients, actually. And that was, you know, almost 10 years ago. So um, it just so then and then, um, you know, it just started to my career evolved. And I think it just started making sense that I try to focus on something in Texas because I was traveling so much at that point, the travel, I had a, you know, five, eight year, you know, five to eight year old. And I just wanted to be home more. And so I started working for an influencer marketing company. And what's interesting, I think one of the questions you had posed to me earlier was like, what was something you didn't think you could do that actually you've been successful at and sales? Like I, I remember calling one of my clients former clients who had moved from a, a role at a brand to a sales role. And I just said, mm. I just don't know if I can do it. And she said, Marty, 
you have been selling your whole life. I know. know. Sales. Yeah. Yeah. And it just like, that was such an epiphany. I I hadn't, I just hadn't hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So the second thing that I want everyone to take away from what Margie is saying after one networking being about most important is two is where are your skills transferable, right? So not realizing that many of us, even if we're in the legal field, we are selling, we are selling our ideas. We are selling a product or service. We might be actually selling it to get money, but we're, we're negotiating with people to, you know, hey, this is the way we should go forward. This is the strategy we should be doing. So where can you find your ways that your skills are transferable? And I think that's um, another huge takeaway to go from production to media and then from media into still within, because you're in a SaaS-based environment now, right? At a startup, is that right? Right, right. Yeah. So why don't you take people how you then took that into sales and where you are, what you're doing now? Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, we, so the company prior to this, you know, I started doing business develop for, for business development for them in Texas because they hadn't really broken through the market here. So that was my focus and that's why I kept it more of a local job. And then um, that company was acquired and um, things changed. So I moved to this company. I started in an account management role, which was spot on for me because that's what I've, spent a lot of time doing it's you know and I love I do love project management I'm one of those like wacky people that actually enjoys all that it's very satisfying to get your tasks done <laughs> yep well you're it's your strengths right you're really good at yeah it. but but it, kind of this account management job evolved into a sales position kind of slash account management and I just realized like a lot of the same principles of what I've done my whole career were about client relationships, building trust and, um, and um, relationships with clients in a way that they feel, okay, this person's not trying to just sell me. They actually care about my business. They're bringing me a solution that, and they're applying it to where I need help. Um, And so it's, it's back to that solving business problems for clients and building a trust and a strong relationship so that they believe you and, and want to work with you. And so that's kind of what I've translated, I think, through my whole career yeah. is that type of relationships and it's working. Um, yeah. right. We have amazing, so our company is, it's a SaaS platform, but it's um, gamification. So we have 200 um, pre-built game templates, everything from like a quiz to a whack-a-mole game to a slot, to a spinner, like really fun games that it used to take and it still can take lots of time and money and effort and resource to do it. And it's one and done. Well, now you have a library of games that you can skin in your own look and feel and get them out to the marketplace and also attach digital pricing. So there's instant wins. So we have a lot of clients are using this for their loyalty program. So to oh, keep okay. members engaged, like, uh, and have them, you know, give more information. Um, and so we have great clients like Southwest airlines and T-Mobile and Taco Bell and a couple other really, well, actually a lot more companies as are just a few, but it's just been really exciting. I've been here four years and just to see how this company's evolving. We were acquired by a private equity company about two years ago and, um, and we've just taken off. I mean, it's just incredible where this company is going. I'm super excited to be here. It was a very small company when I started and it's, it's tripled at this point That's in amazing. less than four years. So it's, it's what's, really um, fun. what's one thing about what you're doing now that you like more than you thought you would? Well, the sales part for sure. Okay. Um, I really, that, that's been just super, super, um, interesting and fun. You know, I didn't know if I'd be good at it and I, you know, I am. <laughs> yeah, of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> um, but you work hard at it, you know, sales is tough, you know, it's tough and you've got to, you know, got to be at it every day. You got to be on every day. You got to like, you know, yep. Um, but I would say that was, that is definitely something that I wasn't sure that I was going to be good at. And, um, but it's, it's work, it's working out. Okay. And then what is more challenging 
than you thought it would be? Well, you know, challenging is rejection. You know, okay. how do you not take that personally? You okay. know, it's usually like in your rational brain, you're like, okay, it's a business decision. They didn't have the budget. They didn't have this. They didn't have that. You know, it's hard not to take that personally. I think that's an important kind of thing through your career. You got to learn how not to take things personally. It's really, really hard. How'd you manage your mindset to not take it personally? I think you just have to learn that you're not in control of those decisions. What I hear you saying then is like, know the variables you can control. Be yeah. clear in what you can't control. Do your best. Right. And, you know, I guess learn from the feedback if if the sale doesn't go through or, right. you know, whatever happens. It's like yeah. learning from the feedback and how you can apply that moving forward. Who has been your most important professional mentor? It's funny. I mean, I've had a few, but there were probably one. And I, one that stands out to me that I don't even think she realized she was my mentor was a woman in, in kind of in my 20s when I was working at MTV. I just had never seen a female executive that didn't take the crap, mm. but did it in a way that where she was gracious and she was, and she awarded success and she gave feedback to non-success. It was a very clear, she was very clear. If you performed well, there was no like politics around it. Right. And I just, I kind of took her on as my, as my mentor. Yeah. Because I thought this is the type of person I want to be. Like, this is like, people respect her. They're not scared of her. They respect her. And as long as you do your job, like it was really black and white. Yeah. And I just really appreciate that because as you know, as we've all seen in our careers, there are not a lot of people that are like that or just very like that they stand for integrity and um, success. And you know what the, you know what the guardrails are. Yeah. And I just love, and she was so well-respected and, um, and she had come over, she was an independent filmmaker that had come over to MTV network. So she was kind of evolving her career. And I just thought, wow, that is so cool. Like she's done, she's just jumped into something so new. So I think I think she continues to have influence. She has a blog, um, Lauren Zelaznik is her name. And she's just kind of an amazing person that's just had a really interesting career. Okay, that's really good. So what I'm hearing is straight shooter, yeah. no politics, direct feedback, uh, professional, right? And just mm-hmm. the kind of attributes we all want to well, I'm going to say we all want to work with and around. I know. We try. We try our best. We we? try our best. Um, All right. So I have a couple more questions for you. So you have always been in this place where (laughs) I feel like when the hard, sticky challenge comes in, people are like, give it to Margie. She'll figure it out. And you have this amazing ability to, to not get dragged into all the bit of pieces and like kind of be able to see the way through as to make a really solid strategic recommendation for getting, for moving forward, which I always interpreted as just someone who was really able to tap into their gut instinct, which I want you to tell me like, one, is that true? Just being able to tap into your gut. And how do you do that? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just experience. Um, I think one is experience and two is to try to not get overwhelmed by the issue at hand and try to work through it. Cause I I think these types of things are so overwhelming. Um, and just to work through it, um, in a way that really makes sense for the solution. It's like, start with what do you want the solution to be? (laughs) And then kind of work backwards. How do, how do I step through that so that we get to that solution? I think it's kind of working backwards too really helps. Also worked my arse off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I, I did work really hard and I cared. I still care so much. I mean, that's probably, I think, I think about going back to your question about challenges. I do think that's, that's a personal challenge. It's like, how do you, care enough that the work is good, but not care so much that it just makes you, makes you just too stressed out. Like I, you know, we all deal with stress, right? Right. And sometimes you can care so much that the, your stress level goes way up. So that's something I'm constantly trying to battle is like, how do you, 
how do you care enough that you have great output and great product, um, but not so much that it kind of takes a toll on you? Okay. Okay. Really, really good. Like thoughtful, just like not, not like staying above the fray, keeping focused on the end goal and then finding your own way to work through your stress. Cause again, everybody's going to experience stress. Yeah. in a different way. So um, really helpful. Thank you. So I think we, what we've heard today is, you know, networking, um, where you can transfer your skills, finding professional mentors, which are straight shooters and, you know, sort of navigating among the fray and then eventually um, rounding out that top list in ways that you can stay and tap into your gut and not get mired down, but also be able to move something forward and, you know, make sure that you're also maintaining your own well-being. So um, that's what I take away from that. So that's really helpful. So thank you for that. All right. Last question. What are you reading or listening to that you think our listeners would benefit from? I hate to admit, but I am much more of an escapist in my in my podcast. We can benefit my, from escapism. <laughs> no, I, I mean, if you guys haven't listened to Smartless, it's got to be one of my favorites with Jason Bateman, Will Arnett. Yeah. So we'll put the link to that in the show notes. Why do you love it? <laughs> I just, they're so irreverent and they're just fun and they've got great guests and they're just always just like making fun of each other in this like really respectful way. You know, it's like, you know, they love each other. They're like brothers and it's just super fun to listen to them. Well, Margie, this was really a treat. It's always a treat to see you. And um, because I get to look at her right now, everybody, Um, and also chat with you. So thank you for sharing, you know, your, your story and how you navigate through career and, you know, just dropping some, some wisdom on people. So I really appreciate that. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. This was so fun. Thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this and you want more information, go to my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. There you can find information on how to work with me one-on-one or my group programs, or even bring me into your workplace. I'll put the link to my website in the show notes. But hey, listen, before you go, do me a favor, rate and review this podcast because it definitely helps me get the word out to people everywhere so that they can also thrive in the workplace. All right, friends, I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.